These are everyday scenes at Sangam Vihar in South Delhi, known to be Asia's largest unauthorized settlement. A recent study projects how close to 200,000 people live here within a one square kilometer radius. Located merely 20 kilometers from the parliament, Sangam Vihar falls at the tail end of the capital's piped water connection. Water supply runs out even before it reaches most blocks. With bore wells known to be operational only once in a month, residents are left with no choice but to make distress calls for water tankers. But they are far from adequate. Driven to buy two kinds of water, one for drinking and the other for domestic usage, this also means additional financial burden for the colony's inhabitants, most of whom are migrant workers and landless labourers from neighbouring sticks. We have a private tank. 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 Reports from the past few years have told us that this, however, is not a local problem. The capital has been witnessing water shortages, sometimes up to 25% of its overall requirements, across its geography and socio-economic demographic. Neighbouring Gurugram, known to have some of the most upscale neighbourhoods in NCR, hasn't been able to escape the situation either. Bore wells are banned in certain neighbourhoods here, which means many apartment complexes like these purchase water from state pipelines. One kilolitre costs about 60 rupees, and a housing complex like this may need an average of 150 kilolitres every day for gardening and landscaping alone. So why is this happening? Many reasons have been cited over the many years that Delhi has grappled with water stress. From groundwater exploitation, climate change impact, even interstate politics. But Chandra Bhushan, president of environmental research organization iForest, points out how it is not water availability, but perhaps gross mismanagement that is at the heart of the problem. So one, Delhi, the inequality of water supply is very high. You have parts of Delhi which gets uh, 500 liter per capita per day water supply. And then you have parts uh, which doesn't even get 40, 50 liters per capita per day. Number two, uh, the wastage, the leakage, the loss uh, is in higher 20s, 30s. And number three, that Delhi is not recycling and reusing a lot of its water. There is no reason why Delhi cannot meet its water supply and provide water to everyone uh, with its current supply levels. Experts have been harping on how critical it is for cities like Delhi to treat and reuse its wastewater to ease pressures on fresh water stocks. Even now, not even half of Delhi's sewage gets treated. And from what is treated, a dismal 18% is actually utilised. Despite the 35 centralized treatment plants here, poor pipeline connections to and from the city seems to be a major gap. Under these conditions, there has been growing advocacy for smaller, decentralized facilities that enable treatment and reuse at individual or cluster levels. Dipinder Kapoor heads the water program at the Delhi-based think tank, Center for Science and Environment. A few months ago, he led a survey at Sangam Vihar to try and come up with a plan for managing its wastewater. We realized that such a large settlement is 
getting only 45 liters per person per day on an average. And that made us think why this is happening. Secondly, when we looked at the sanitation systems, we saw that this dense unplanned settlement of about uh, 100,000 properties in that area had a non seaward sanitation, as we call it, a septic tank based sanitation system. That needs regular emptying. But the challenge here is that a large, dense, unplanned settlement of a million population is generating at least 80% of that 45 million litres a day as wastewater. The volumes are too huge and the emptying is too frequent of the septic tanks. Realizing that treating such large volumes of wastewater through centralized water treatment alone may not be feasible, CSE's proposal has called for a decentralized setup where wastewater is treated and reused locally. Sangam Vihar, if you see, has all these blocks, about 13 blocks. And the area behind Sangam Vihar is a forest area. So instead of trying to link the sewerage system as is being shown in the map, we recommended in our study half the Sangam Vihar sewerage system can be connected to the city sewerage system, but the other half of Sangam Vihar, which is very dense, its sewerage system and storm water should be connected to decentralized points outside Sangam Vihar in the forest area. And it will be an ideal flow. The treated wastewater can recharge these lakes and water bodies which are naturally here around them and also augment in turn the groundwater recharge and water supply of that area. Given the water crisis, several states have mandated decentralized sewage treatment plants within housing and commercial complexes. A report from 2018 revealed, however, that 80% of such small decentralized systems in Gurugram's housing societies were dysfunctional. This is where startups like the Delhi-based Digital Pani are trying to create a market for themselves. An IoT platform, their service is about turning around non-functional water assets to efficient ones through a plug-and-play model. Mansi, CEO of the company, explains how this is done by integrating automation into an existing technology. We are not trying to aim for fully automated, 100% digitized assets because the cost and the benefit has to also play out for the customers. So we are always proposing a hybrid sort of operation where you're blending in technology, where it's useful, where you're actually able to control key things, manage key issues which come up. And of course, manpower will still have a role to play. This upcoming residential complex in Gurugram, for instance, has a 130 kiloliter STP on its premises. The plant was maintained manually till Digital Pani took over operations. Shushpendra Kumar has been working here for two years and has witnessed the transition firsthand. This pH meter is a sensor in it, so this pH daily means that it is here. If the pH increases the pH increase, the maximum is more than the pH increase, then we have alert that the pH is increasing, the COD is increasing. It means that we have three operators here, we have 24 hours here, now there are two operators. Only 8-8 hours are safe. 9 to 5 o'clock. बीच में चार फोर फोर आवर कोई नहीं रहता है यहाँ पे। SBR में issues वगैरह जो थे, level sensor वगैरह सब कुछ proper काम कर रहा है इसका? इसका sir sensor सब problem कितना दिखा रहा है इसमें? Technical expert of the company Rahul Singh tells us how solving a crisis through sensor-based monitoring is just a smarter way of running these plants. Actually, अगर manual plants की बात करें तो वहाँ पे हमें visibility होती ही नहीं किसी चीज की। अगर मैं एक स्टार्टिंग से बात करना चाहूँ तो एक बास्क्रीन चैम्बर होता है लाइक like, आप जब तक वहाँ पे फिजिकली जाके नहीं एड्रेस करोगे उस इशू को नहीं देखोगे आपको पता ही लगेगा तो हमारे डिशल पानी हम ट्रैक रखते हैं कितना आया कितना गया अगर बीच में कुछ लॉस हुआ तो कहाँ हुआ हम मेजर कर सकते हैं देन uh, हमने सेंसर्स लगाए हुए हैं एयरलाइन के लिए मोटराइज बॉल वन 
and second motorized wall yahan pe lagaya hua hai rahul claims that the efficiency of this plant has improved by 20% since it went digital the treated water is said to be clean enough for landscaping and should soon be used for flushing purposes this means the building will hopefully not need to purchase any extra water however we were unable to confirm these claims from either the building management or its residents the one big question that comes up with large electromechanical plants though is the use of chemicals what potential damage does this cause to the environment obviously there are environmental uh, concerns related to chemicals i mean to say your sewage is largely organic in nature and then if you are using chlorine or other chemicals you are going to produce some organic chlorine compounds uh, which are toxic so use of chemical always is a concern and therefore you know being judicious about it making sure that you are you are doing optimal chemical dosing While Digital Pani claims that efficient monitoring actually controls chemical dosing, is it possible for decentralized systems to opt for biotreatment? So, this is the rectangular building of the office and the treatment system is on one side of the building. Dipinder walks us through this nature-based treatment plant installed in their Delhi office. Here, 8 kiloliters per day of waste water is treated without the use of chemicals or electricity. This water is then used for horticulture. But can a system like this work for large-scale projects? You have to understand that nature-based system will treat your water to a certain level. And therefore, after that if you want a higher quality of water then you might be required to go to electromechanical system okay. so there is a possibility of a electromechanical system and nature based solution existing together if we are thinking about really high level of reuse of water chandra bhushan further points out how we don't really need to look too far away for successful and constructive hybrid models that use both electromechanical and natural systems we can look at countries like singapore which are e which is equally water stressed country uh they have done remarkably well with uh, recycling of water we can see city like chennai where recycling of water is now meeting some of the most uh, water supply for some of the most critical industries including petrochemicals so even if we are able to recycle and reuse 30 40% of water it means that much more water available for domestic use the critical sector okay which is important for health and hygiene so uh, recycling of wastewater wastewater treatment uh, has immense role to play uh, considering in a climate constrained uh, society now where uh, uh, rainfall is more extreme groundwater recharge is not very high uh i i believe that we will have to do everything to reuse and recycle uh, water to reduce our, our our increasing demand of fresh water thanks for watching eco india if you like the story please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on youtube